Hi there, welcome to chendu.org. I hope you are having a fantastic week ahead. In this brief video tutorial, I would like to explain to you how the pivot calendar is constructed and how you can use it and how you can extend it. First, let's take a very quick demo of the pivot calendar. Before moving any progress, uh, before making any progress, let me first acknowledge uh, Rob from Power Pivot Pro who has come up with this idea which is a very fantastic way to explore pivot uh, style calendars maybe i can very quickly show you uh, a demo this is what rob's uh, calendar chart looks like it is a uh, it is made with some fictional data of ufo sightings and alien abductions obviously fictional uh, that shows uh, various things like how uh, you can you can summarize this by total abductions or UFO sightings or late night sightings in various years various months so using the slicers you would be selecting a cross-section of these things and then uh, the charts would show up here indicating how many sightings were there on each day and uh, what kind of sightings were they and uh, the intensity and all those things pretty interesting and uh, nifty way of exploring Data that is spanned across multiple months in a calendar style because calendars are very natural uh, when you look at monthly data now uh, This particular chart that Rob has made uses a lot of techniques mainly around power pivot pro and uh, and DAX formulas. These are very quite advanced and often uh, slightly more confusing and uh, it would probably be very safe to say that uh, one would spend a lot of time before they can come up with something like this or enhance this. Fortunately for us, uh, Rob has explained uh, you know how uh, how he has constructed this chart and also gave us a template that you can use to uh, apply it to your own data and modify it. Now, what I would be doing is I won't be using any of his techniques because uh, that requires a bit of power pivot and array formulas and cube formulas and all that. So we'll shy away from that. We'll but still come up with something that is pretty nifty and usable uh, just by relying on Excel pivot tables and simple formulas and one or two conditional formatting techniques. So let us move ahead and see what I have come up with. So this is a pivot calendar. As you can see, we are using a slicer here. Uh, this is an interactive way to filter data in Excel 2010 and above. So you can select any month and that particular month's calendar will load up here uh, like that. You can also switch years. So I can go back in time or I can go forward in time and I can see calendars for any month. For example, I can go all the way uh, back into 1981 when I was born. Uh, and I can see uh, uh, that my birthday happens to be on Tuesday. Uh, so this is how uh, you can use these controls, the, uh, the slider control to modify the year, as well as the slicer to select the month. And the calendar will show up here. Now you might be wondering, you know, who would in their uh, my right mind use a, is, is a pivot table calendar because the calendar is always there right, right in your system tray whenever you want you can pull it up and see the dates uh, but uh, bear with me because I think this approach has slightly slight you different uses when you apply it with some data so let me just show you very quickly uh, first thing is we will just hide this guy and I'll just move up something like this so here is a pivot table calendar that I came up with that can be used to show interactively a various metrics for example in October 2012 which is a future month so I'll probably sell something like August 2012 that makes a lot of sense um, we can show the productivity as a as a scale so 77% of productivity would be white and 100% productivity would be green like that or you can show the attendance of employees or defects per million based on the day of week and you can select these months and modify the selection and it would show up that data now using this slicer technique we can apply the uh, 
calendar chart to show something like this this is pretty much similar to what uh, rob's chart is on the power pivot pro uh, but uses different techniques so you might be wondering you know how can we even come up with something like this how do i uh, you know design this so let me very quickly explain to you what is the technique behind this and how it works first thing is i'll just unhide the original calendar because this is what i will be explaining and this is uh, an additional part that relies on a bit of formulas but you can come up with that once you understand how this itself is constructed so let us very quickly jump into calculations before moving making a move let's just make a quick note of certain things i'll just turn on the formula bar and i'll select the year you can note that this year is in g3 uh, g3 right the slicer is linked to that and that cell address is g3 and this is a uh, this is a slicer so let us go to calculations and the selected year is fetched from pivot calendar g3 and we are just checking whether that year happens to be a leap year or not this is because if it is a leap year then we need to have uh, 366 days otherwise there will be 365 days so that's about it and then uh, based on that year i'm just constructing a date the very first day of that year would be year number and one comma one indicating january first of that year and the next day would be just uh, previous day plus one and we'll just drag this down until we have all the dates in any year so 2012 will have 366 days because it's a leap year uh, whereas if it is 2011 the last day would stop there there will be one more day here but we won't consider that for our analysis then we split the day month and year portions using a formula like this day is uh, day of b6 month is b6 and we will just format this as 3ms so that it can be shown as jan feb march or if you are on a different locale like french or german i don't know what the months are called but whatever they are they will show up here and the year will be 2012 there is no need to write a formula here but we still use it so it's very simple then the two other columns are added these are weekday weekday is just weekday of that so if the first day of the year happens to be a sunday it will be one Monday will be 2, Tuesday will be 3, like that. And the only other interesting part of this formula is week number. Week number for the very first day in the year will be 1. Uh, let me first very quickly explain what week number is uh, using a small drawing here. Uh, let me just uh, screen draw. So let us just say this is a calendar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. this is a calendar you can see that it has uh, one uh, two three four five uh, six rows and then it has one two three four five six seven columns each column for one day of week and maximum of six rows can be there in the calendar because uh, you can have a month that starts on Saturday for example and it can have 31 days so first is Saturday 8th is Saturday and 15th is Saturday 22nd is Saturday 29th is Saturday and then you have two more days here so uh, there is a maximum possibility of six rows in any calendar printed calendar so we put that six and this now uh, we need to determine where each of those dates would fit in whether it will be in the first row second row third row fourth row fifth row sixth row now obviously the first of a month would be in the first row itself no matter what day it happens to be whether it's sunday or saturday it will still be in the very first row so we will uh, assume that the first date in the year which is also first day in that month will be in the first row then we just keep on maintaining the row number same as the previous date until we hit a Sunday because uh, this is Sunday and this is a Saturday right so we'll we'll maintain the uh, day of uh, the row number as one until we uh, go all the way to Saturday then then we hit the Sunday once again if it is Sunday then we increment the row number and we will continue this logic uh, we will break this and reset it to 1 only if there is a new month. 
so this is how the row numbers can be calculated now I'll just uh, discard this drawing and let's move back to the calculations and see which formula is doing this so the very first week number will be 1 uh, which is very simple for the second time we just check if uh, if the months are same if the months are same uh, then then if if the if the day of week happens to be 1 then we need to increment if the day of week happens to be 1 that means if the day of week is Sunday then increment the row number by 1 otherwise just keep it as it is so G6 plus 1 or G6 and if there is a month change then we will reset it back to 1 so this kind of cycles through the row numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then goes back to 1 in a very small month like February there is a uh, you will only have 5 rows so it will go all the way up to 5 and then reset to 1 so you can see that there are a few rows with one then there will be two three four five it stops at five then again february starts it goes all the way up to five it stops then you have march which can probably go up to f again it stops at five then you have april may like that there may be a month here and there which might have six rows right so yeah you can see that in december which has six rows then these additional data are just keyed in these are randomly generated for our purpose employee attendance productivity and defects per million uh, but you can uh, you can probably fetch it and sh put them there uh, for the pivot calendar chart now there are two things that we need one of them is a calendar which is which is a simple pivot table all we do is uh, we put the month in the report filter this is just for cosmetic purpose we know which month is selected uh, we drag the day and put it in in the values weekday in the column and week number in the row now in any given month there will be some of day will be just uh, that particular day so you get a calendar here it might be a bit tricky for some of you to understand how this calendar actually came up here but it is a very simple a manipulation of the data because we have set it up like this we calculated the weekday and row number in the calendar so all we are now doing is putting weeks in columns and row numbers in the row row level and then we are asking excel to just sum up the days in in one month the sum of days will be only one so may you select that now these are slicers so what happens is if you hold the control and click on one more month you can really select two months that will mess up things for us for example you can see that may june that is multiple items and now you, these these are getting summed up and that's where the pivot once you select multiple you can really understand what is going on so the sum of first days second days third days fifth day is seven because uh, this is five six and then also the second month which was selected june starts on uh, Sunday so that will be one that's how it works so when you select couple of items then you can see that it is really a pivot table otherwise it is just a simple calendar but since we don't hold the control uh, we just click on any month it will show up the calendar for that particular month now once you have the calendar how do you fetch the remaining details well for that we construct three more pivot tables one for attendance one for productivity and one for defects per million the structure of this pivot tables is similar to that the only additional thing is instead of using sum of day we would be using uh, sum of productivity or sum of defects or sum of employee attendance and uh, there is a bit of uh, roundabout things going on here the first thing that we do is uh, based on what is selected in the calculations we sell we determine the chosen metric three and then uh, out of these three data tables we just fetch the corresponding item for the metric so since three is selected the list of data is loaded here and then we we just uh, pull it back here uh, using using a simple index formula and once the data is is inside this structure uh, it is an extra row here so you can see that like that all we do is we apply conditional formatting on top of it uh, so that it can show up in a different color based on the amount of the value there is to simplify understanding those numbers i have added a legend here legend is uh, this is again very very simple stuff 
I'm sure you can break down the formulas and understand what is behind this. So I won't go into those details. So when you change this, uh, the, the chosen metric changes and accordingly the this list gets refreshed and then the new values will be loaded back here and you get everything nice. Now you might be wondering, this is all fine Chandu, but we notice that you don't have values for all years. You only have values for one year. That's right. We have values only for 2012. So how is the year change happening? If I move it to 2011, you notice this calendar is changing. This is because here this becomes 2011. So all these values will be recalculated. Now these values are recalculated. That's fine. But how is the pivot table changing? Because only when the pivot cha table changes, the calendar refreshes because these are all references to the pivot table, right? So how is the pivot table changing? Well, it's very simple, my friend. All I'm doing is whenever you click on this slicer, uh, the slider, I am in the background, I'm running a pivot table refresh using a simple VBA code. Let me just show that to you. Uh, this is our, uh, our VBA window. In the module one, I have a simple sub one line macro. If spinner one changes, uh, spinner or slider, whichever we can call it, uh, I'm just asking active workbook dot refresh all. Just go ahead and refresh all the pivot tables that there are. So whenever you change this, the pivot tables are refreshed in the background, and hence you get the new calendar. Okay, so that is how the pivot calendar is constructed. I hope you find this idea interesting and go ahead and apply to some area of your work please keep in mind that uh, when you are using a calendar chart you should only use it where calendar is an intuitive structure for example monitoring employee attendance or uh, sh seeing how shifts are spaced out uh, for a certain team or for example defects or maybe calls things like that but when you want to really understand the trend of a particular information, you are better off constructing a line chart or a column chart that shows the data uh, with time on X axis. The kind of calendar structure is very useful for things like appointments or um, employee vacations and leaves and attendance these kind of things where you can probably see it on a calendar structure to get a better idea because these this is how we are used to seeing but for everything else that is for example if you want to track the productivity uh, in the last 12 months you should probably not use a calendar because it makes it very difficult to understand what is happening rather you should rely on a simple line chart so as long as you keep that in mind i'm sure you will find a very good use for a calendar kind of approach when you are charting some data once again thank you so much for spending time and uh, understanding something and if you have some doubts or questions please visit chandu.org and drop them there if you want to download this particular excel workbook just uh, see the link if you are watching this in youtube just see the link beneath the video and go there and get the workbook if you are already on chandu.org then probably scroll down and you will find the download link Thank you so much once again. You have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.